After a load has been created, you can go ahead and see details about that load by clicking on the information icon uh, on any of the different loads, whether they are assigned or not assigned yet. If you hover over them, you do get some of the basic information, commodity types, purchasers, pickup, drop off, and some of the timestamps. But if we want to get more information, we can go ahead and click on the icon to open up the uh, job window here, which is used throughout the software in a lot of different places and is pretty similar to the ticket window, which we'll cover in another video as well. The first tab in the job window is the basic job details tab. So in here you get the bill of lading, the current status, purchaser information, commodity information, pickup and drop off location information, uh, mileage, driver, and etc. Some of the other things to note in here is that there are often these little edit icons. So if we click on an edit, we can go ahead and type in a different um, value in there or select from a drop down and click enter to confirm. So I can change the PO number uh, from 103, which you'll remember what it originally was and have it here and change it to a different number. So if there's been a typo or something, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, additionally, these yellow icons, if you click on those, those will open up a reroute window, which we'll go over in a different video since that's a, a whole nother window there. And there are also some buttons here on the job page. The close out load button lets you close out a load to, uh, you know, assign it to a driver and fill out the information without having to uh, actually go through the full completion process. This works if there's some sort of errors with a driver, if they uh, are having difficulties and they leave a paper ticket or something on site and do not, you know, follow the procedure in the, the electronic tab, there is the ability to close these out. So if we were to click on the uh, open a new tab, we could go ahead and follow this process. So we could say, hey, it's going to be, you know, completed and kind of just go through this form and fill it out for uh, the specific driver if that ever comes up. Uh, the other buttons down here at the bottom or towards the bottom, we have the refresh pickup data. So if something has changed over in the uh, load call directory and you want to refresh this, if there's, you know, a changed latitude and longitude that, you know, was called in after the load is created, you can refresh it here. And additionally, down here, we have the ability to split the load into two different sites. Uh, sometimes you might have a uh, purchaser who wants you to do uh, half of a load at one tank on one site and then half at a facility down the road. And for billing purposes, it needs to be indicated as a split site. So if we go ahead and do that, then we could go ahead and go through this process. In this case, um, I don't have any other loads with the same uh, setup here, so you can't do it. It would need to have the uh, same purchaser, the same drop off, but a different pickup location, which I haven't created any of those loads. But if you are gonna split it that way, you can go ahead and come into here and kind of just click and link them together and link them as a split site job, which uh, is not very common, but may come up in some cases for some purchasers if they do want you to do that. Uh, the other way that splits work, the driver can also kind of initiate these if it's the same facility. Um, so you wouldn't have to worry about handling that in here, but uh, some advanced options down here at the bottom that may or not be useful depending on your situation. The second tab in the job window is the map tab, which is pretty straightforward. If we go into here, we can click on the blue load map button, which will pull up the uh, actual route or suggested route from Google Maps, as well as the directions, in case you need to reference those, and the mileage and the estimated time. So you can toggle between satellite view and normal map view. You can go ahead and use your driver pin, go full screen, zoom in and out, and everything else you'd expect to do on a Google Map. The next tab in the job window is the alerts tab which allows you to customize alerts that will show up to drivers at different points while they're working on their load. Uh, some of these alerts will also show up to dispatch if you want to have those set. Uh, typically, these will be preset on a pickup or a drop-off. So if you create a pickup with a specific alert that you want to show up every time, you'd configure that over in the directory. That could be like a gate key or other site information that you want uh, show to the driver every time. Uh, in this case, I didn't have any of these alerts preset in the directory when I created this load, but I can go ahead and edit them in here. So for example, when the driver arrives at the shipper location, we could have an alert right here that says, 
gate code one, two, three, four, or uh, anything like that. So a lot of times these are actually quite lengthy, but uh, they'll be preset typically. There's no need to edit them, but if you do want to come in here and see what the drivers have or edit the different alerts that will show up in here, then you can go ahead and come into the alerts tab and customize or view them as needed. The next tab in the jobs window is the messages tab. So these are similar to messages with a driver, except when you do a message on a job, it creates a message thread with dispatch, the drivers, and then any of the uh, purchasers or site facility for this specific load. So this is a temporary group message just for this specific load. So we can go ahead and type a message in here and click send like other messaging applications. And if we do that, then this the driver will be alerted as well as um, the producer site facility or purchasers that have the app installed and that are tied to this load. One thing to note in here is we can go ahead and also mark these as read or unread. If I mark it as unread, this job 18, then you'll notice over here on this job 18 right here that there's a little unread job message icon right here that uh, indicates we need to come in here and read this message. So we'll go ahead and mark it as read. So that makes it easy to see if there is a, a thread that needs um, answering either from a driver or somebody else within a specific load. The next tab in the jobs window is the timestamps tab, which when you pull this up, you can see all of the timestamps tied to this job. Uh, in this case, this is an unassigned load, so it only has a timestamp for being created. But as soon as it's assigned, you would get a timestamp for when it's assigned, uh, when the load has been started by a driver, uh, pickup, drop off times and everything else in here will be filled out as a driver works on completing out their uh, load. Our next tab is the tickets tab. So coming into here on this load that hasn't had any work done, it, done on it, you can see that there are no tickets. Now a ticket is the uh, physical printed off ticket that the driver can leave on site. It contains the driver measurements and everything like that. So let's go ahead and jump to a different job so you can see what that would look like briefly. So if I come into here, let's go into this load and then go into tickets. You can see this ticket right here has been created by the driver. One thing to note is that a ticket takes the uh, job number typically and then adds two numbers to the end of it. Uh, the first number would indicate a uh, driver number and then the second would indicate the uh, um, split number. So this was the first assignment to a driver, so it's a zero. If it had been assigned to three or four drivers, this number could be larger. Usually it's a zero. And then if a job gets split, this can be one, two, three, four on the way up. So that kind of just helps make uh, it easier to collate ticket numbers with job numbers. But I can go ahead and click on this view ticket, which will open up a very similar window. We'll go over this in a different video. But uh, any the tickets are created when a job when a driver goes on site and is working on the job. They'll create physical tickets in the system that uh, will have all of their uh, pickup and drop off measurements, photos, things of that nature. So we'll cover that in a different video though. The last two tabs on the job window are the log and the notes tab. So a log, if you come into here, it's going to just have a change log. So you can see some of the actions that have been taking place. The job was created, the uh, PO number was updated, and the alert was updated. So this will keep a timestamped uh, accountability log for every change made to a specific load. And then the notes tab is kind of like the log, but they're user entered. So if you want to put specific notes about a load, something that may have happened during a shift, a dispatcher could come in here and put in any information that they would like and save it for a future reference. So we could say the driver had a difficulty finding location, if I could spell difficulty apparently. So we can go ahead and click add note, and then we have uh, similar to the notes within drivers, you have little sticky notes that you can go ahead and change and delete. And uh, these kind of just stick on here and are useful in the future for uh, if there was something odd about a job going back and referencing it and having it timestamped and, and who put the load in and everything else. So uh, something probably pretty useful if if circumstances um, do come up where it's uh, needed.